how I safely perform procedures on venomous snakes. Coming up. Bangs in your face. Subscribe now. Hey, before we get started today, what's up, Venom Squad? <laughs> um, I want to thank everybody who's been supporting us, all of our generous contributors for the Serpent Center. We're still working hard. We're on our way. We're close. Give you guys a little update. This video is going to be a short one. This is something that I have to do. How to safely perform a procedure on a venomous snake. So we just thought we'd film it for y'all. So a buddy of mine brought me this cane break that he that he's had, and, and I'll tell you, it, it's it's a beautiful snake, okay? But he says it stopped eating, and it, it it's in a dry shed, and so I said, "Well, bring it to me. Let me see what I can do with it." And he bet me that I couldn't save this snake, okay? And and I'm gonna prove him wrong. There's a lot that can be done with this animal to pop it back into health. I mean, the first thing is that we got to get this dry shed off this animal. And let me tell you, I know a million tricks on getting sheds off of animals. I mean, of course you soak them, and, and I soak them with a couple of drops of olive oil. It helps soften that skin and help come off. And also there's a product out there called Sheddies that works like magic. And, but I'll tell you, I've soaked this animal. I've done every trick in the book, and I got most of the skin off of her, but she's at the point where she's stressed. As a last resort, I'll nebulize an animal, I'll put them to sleep, and then peel them. Any kind of medical procedure on an animal, if you're not a vet, if you don't know what you're doing, you shouldn't be doing this. I've been doing this for 40 years, and with venomous animals, a lot of vets won't work with venomous animals. And I've worked with hand-in-hand -hand with vets and taught me how to do this the right way. And they prefer me to do it, so I'm able to get my own medications and my own stuff prescriptions for what I need to do what I need to do with my animals. Um, this snake's gonna be, it's gonna be a challenge, but I'm gonna save this damn cane break watch. But I'm gonna show her to you real quick, and then we're gonna get a weight on her, and then I'm gonna do the formula, and we're gonna put her to sleep and get the rest of the shed off her. Because the main thing is, is I don't wanna stress her. Stress with reptiles is the number one killer. If you're gonna neck an animal while it's awake and cut on it and pull on it and peel on it and screw with it, that snake's already in a weakened state. And what you're doing is you're adding to that snake's stress level and pain level. They feel pain just like every other living organism, okay? And you're gonna just go ahead and jumpstart that snake into death. People need to see that this can be done correctly in the right way. And I wanna show you the right way to do this stuff. But I'm gonna show you this little cane break first. This, this snake is squirrely. And I've already monkey put it enough, and I don't want to stress it. I really don't want to stress this animal. And it being a venomous animal, we got to be really careful. But it's going to be a beautiful snake. After I get this thing cleaned up and get feed on it, it's going to be gorgeous. I hate to see a snake in this state. I mean, she's underweight, and she has got skin on her like glue. I mean, and I pulled out all the stops on this little girl and tried my best to get that off her without putting her to sleep. But it's okay, little girl. But she's skinny, she's underweight, and that skin from where you see it hanging there down, it's on there like super glue. So I've soaked her all day, and I'm gonna go ahead and put her to sleep, and we're gonna tube her up, and we're gonna get that skin off of her. And then we're gonna put her in quarantine, and keep her nice and warm, Get back in there, girl. Keep her nice and warm and get her on feed. And when I say warm, for a snake that is not doing good, 78, 80 degrees. I'm not talking about 90 degrees. I mean, just room temperature, warm for her would be 78, 80 degrees. That'd be perfect. And I'll get that snake feed. I'll keep her in a dark room and I'll offer live prey. And if she doesn't take live, I'll offer a prey item that is fresh killed. I'll get her back on feed. And you watch. I'm going to show you this snake again in three months. It's going to be this big around, healthy, vibrant, and beautiful. But, uh, okay, I'm going to get a weight on her first. Okay, we've already done the tear on our 
nice new digital vet scale for the bucket and let's see what the snake weighs all right wow she's a whopping one pound seven ounces she's light she's light it's because she's she, she hasn't fed in a long time but so now i can go ahead and do the formula for my drug that's going to put her to sleep yeah four pounds teetering between six and seven ounces but okay so she yep she weighs a pound and seven ounces now that's really light okay let's get her set up and let her take a nap <laughs> okay this is my little machine that i fashioned to and, and basically this this is just a nebulizer it's, it's for inhalants you know and um you see i've i've rigged it up to a tub to an airtight tub and this is where we're going to put the animal okay we'll put the animal in here actually we're going to get her in there first come on little girl we're going to straighten you up you know working with as many rare reptiles as i do and and important reptiles and you know you know taking them to the vet all the time and you know 99 percent of the time my vet requires me to bring them in like this already asleep okay before they even do anything because and i'm i'm still securing the animal while the vet does whatever they need to do but but um but this is a neat little trick and it works like a charm it keeps me safe and it keeps the animal with no stress because stress is the number one killer. I don't care if it's if it's a if it's a cane break or if it's a if it, or if it's a damn bushmaster. All snakes get stressed. The stress is number one. And if you're necking them and working on them and, and drilling on them and, and you're stressing them, I mean, think about it. If if you're wide awake and somebody's holding you down by your neck and cutting on you or trying to pull a tooth, <laughs> you're in pain, Jack. That's what that snake feels. And all I keep thinking of is maybe that snake feels like once it's being restrained and it's being worked on, it's being picked at, and then that snake feels like it's being eaten. It's a, and well, bushmasters. If you neck a bushmaster for too long and screw them for too long, they go into a state where they roll over and they look like they're dead. I mean, it, it's just it's crazy. It's it, it, it's it's a behavior I've been studying in, in with Jesus. But I, I'll tell you, it's um stress and this is how you do this to, to keep an animal stress-free and work on them and it's the best for the animal and it's the best for you while you're working on a venomous animal so now now <clears throat> we use isofluorine but my vet got me this new this new stuff and it's self flow it's a little bit stronger you use a little bit less of it but it's um it's a good product it works really well see what we do is we're gonna fill this cup up right here First thing I'm gonna do is get the right amount in there. Well, what that shed skin will do is, after a certain amount of time, if that shed skin stays on there, okay? What is, I gotta do this fast because this stuff dissipates quickly. Um, that emollient that separates the old skin from the new skin sits sits in there still with that with that skin on it almost like a glove okay and that emollient will start to rot and that skin will start to rot and what's going to happen is is it's gonna it's gonna create scale rot on that snake if it's left on there too long and she only weighs a pound and a half so that's where i gotta be careful you can't go too heavy, but you gotta go enough to put her to sleep for at least 20 minutes. And I need one more half. And you go ahead and lend that up quickly because if you breathe that in a little too much, you'll just fall out. <laughs> All right, and now our little girl's in there. And we're gonna go ahead and see and what this does is this turns that liquid it pumps air into it and turns it into a vapor and she's gonna breathe that vapor in 
and it's going to gently put her to sleep and it will put her to sleep for at least 20 to 25 minutes and then we'll wake her back up with a lot of fresh air and some stimulation after we're done working on it so instead of listening to this thing hum for 20 minutes um you show them the snake moving around in there babe we'll turn it on when she's when she's soundly asleep <laughs> when she's dreaming Okay, it's been about 20 minutes and um, the drugs already ran through the nebulizer and we give her about another 10, 15 minutes just to completely be out. And the test, she is sound asleep, okay? So now what we do is, and you gotta be careful doing this, you don't wanna breathe this stuff in as you're opening this thing up. But we're gonna go ahead and get her out. We're gonna tube her up here. To a, a tube that's taped to the table and I'll tape her down too just to keep myself safe they, that looks like a dead snake don't it <laughs> I assure you she is not dead she is just sleeping what we're gonna do is we're gonna get her up in that tube now I use a dark tube because we want to keep her in the dark while we're doing this it's just kind of a stress thing let's see now I got her head all the way up there see that See where her head's coming out? That way I know she's got a long way before she can back out, so I'm gonna tuck her out just a little bit like this. All right, look how limp she is. She's sound asleep. Then I'm gonna go ahead and just put a little piece of tape over her and the tube like so, just to kind of hold her in there a little bit, just to keep me safe, okay? And now I can go ahead and get busy and start peeling this back. Okay, you can see she's she's got a little bit of muscle movement, but she's still, you know, she's still asleep. But that's just a little bit of stimulation that's making her move. But we've got her secure in there, and I'm just about done. And I'll tell you, I had to use the tweezers on her underbelly. And there we go. And that was, man, it actually got a smell to it. It actually smells bad. So what we're going to do next is... Yeah, she's still, she's still out, but you want them to be just at that state where they're still slightly moving, but you always got to secure that animal safely. But she's asleep, so she's stress-free, okay? And that's the, that's the key to this, is keeping them stress-free, because when you, stress is the number one enemy on reptiles. Oh, okay. yeah, okay, she's starting to come out. That's good. Okay, come on, girl. We're going to work you out this side. In which she was out for about 15 minutes and that's perfect and she's just starting to to come out of it as you can see she's still a little woozy she's moving she's moving a little weird okay but what we're going to do is see she can barely hang on we're going to go ahead and put her back in this box now see how she's moving all like she's drunk okay because she's she's not got her her game together yet you know and what we're going to do now is see how she can't like completely lift her head right now is when she needs fresh air and constant stimulation to get her back to where she was so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and honey um open that door right there babe yeah just open that door and we'll just some nice fresh cool air in here on her and we'll just keep her stimulated and I'll keep stimulating her for the next 15, 20 minutes, which she's, she's doing good. She's doing great. I mean, she was out for 15 minutes, long enough for me to get her tubed, to get her peeled. I mean, that, I mean, you don't want to put them out too long because you can't lose them. If you do it, if you don't do the formula right and you put them down hard, you'll kill them. So you want to get them kind of like what I call twilight. And it just kind of keeps them in a nice, calm sleep. Even like when you're sleeping, if somebody nudges you, you'll move a little bit, but you're still asleep. And that's what you see with the animal. And that's right about where you want them. You want them in twilight. See, she's, she's calm, she's just gonna lay there. And now, the secret to this is, when they're in this state, they're, that, that, they've been inhaling that drug, and it's still in their system, so you gotta work it out of their system. So you gotta keep stimulating them. You want them to keep moving. See how she's kinda still like Gumby. You want them to keep moving. 
keep stimulate her, make her move, make her work for it, to bring her out of that stupor. Yeah, had a girl. <laughs> That's a drunk cane break. <laughs> but look at how beautiful she is now. I mean, she is pretty. That's actually a pretty little cane break. And what we'll do with her next is I'll go ahead and maybe run a, a cycle of tetracycline through her. I might even just, just, just soak her in some Pedialyte or Gatorade and uh, just to give her some electrolytes and, and just a little bit extra boost to try to just get her hydrated really well. And then we're gonna just put her in a dark quarantine room and keep her nice and warm and get her back on feed. You watch, three months, this snake's gonna be a beast. It's gonna be this big around, it's gonna be beautiful. And then my buddy's not getting it back because I put all the work into it. <laughs> I'll use it here at the Serpent Center for a training animal. <laughs> just kidding, buddy, I'll give it back to you. Come on, girl, keep stimulating. Poke, keep her moving. She's doing good. She's doing good. She's doing good. That a girl. That's what I want to see. I want to see tongue movement. I want to see that tongue coming out. I want to see tongue action. I want to see her moving. Yeah, she's she's coming out of it. Notice how she kind of flops over. She's she's still a little drunk, but now she got tongue action. Now her tongue's working. And that's the secret to, to actually putting these snakes to sleep is you don't want to put them out too hard or too long. Just enough time to do what you got to do safely. Okay, well, we've got our little girl completely bounced back. Look at it. she got great tongue action. She's already buzzing at me. She's out of that drunken stupor. I mean, I, I stimulated her for a good 20, 30 minutes and kept her out and kept kept prodding her, kept her moving around, fresh air, and she back. She, she, she done great. And I'll tell you, um, I couldn't have done the formula better. I, I couldn't have done it better because she was out cold for like 15 minutes. And just enough time for me to get that really stuck shed off of her without stressing her out. And just as I was getting towards the end of the tail, and she just started coming to a little bit. So the timing was perfect. And, and, and that's what's important about doing this is timing. Because if you put them down too hard and too deep, it's hard to get them back. It's hard to bring them back, you know? So, and it just takes longer for them to come back. And her being underweight and sickly, I just wanted to put her down for about 15 minutes, just long enough for me to do what I got to do safely and keep her stress-free. But look at how beautiful this snake is. I mean, God, when he brought me the snake the other day, I was like, oh man, that thing's in bad shape, man. You know, but I'll tell you, she's gorgeous. Now we got we to gotta get some weight on her. We'll get some weight on her and get her cleaned up. We're going to, we're going to bounce this little girl back. She's got a, She's in good hands. She's gonna, she's gonna thrive. But uh, yeah, look at that tongue action. She's doing great. She's done great. All right, little lady. Let's put you back in the bucket and get you set up in a tub and in the quarantine room. Get your butt in there. There you go. Get in there. <laughs> she's not back in the bucket. Okay, we've got her all packed up and tucked away and she's doing great I mean she she bounced back immediately and I'll tell you I couldn't have I couldn't have judged that formula better because she was actually out cold for about 14 15 minutes I mean it, it was perfect she just started coming to a little bit just when I was getting to the end of her tail because I actually had to pull some of the belly scales off with the tweezers and stuff and that shed had a smell to it it was already rotting so we just saved that little animal but um we'll get her on feed and we'll bulk her up and if, if, if she needs anything else, we'll get it for her. You know what I mean? We're going to save her butt. But anyways, she's doing good. She's a beautiful snake. But anyways, hope you guys learned something that this can be done right and correctly and safely. If you know what you're doing, if you know how to do it, you know, and I wouldn't advise anybody to try this at home. <laughs> you know, I, I was taught how to do this by a professional, you know, because when you're working with venomous snakes, Vets don't want to do it. <laughs> they really don't. And you, you can't blame them. You really can't. I mean, you know, I got taught how to do this from somebody. And they, they, they said, well, you bring them in like this. Bring them in already asleep. And then we'll go ahead and 
trait them with our stuff and keep them asleep and then we'll work on them. So, but anyways, it's a slick little procedure, but a last resort for me. And for me, when I do that, it's always a last resort because if you don't do it right, you can lose an animal. And if you don't know what you're doing and you don't stimulate them, you don't get that fresh air on them right away, and you don't give them the right amount at the right time, you'll kill them. So it's it's not nothing to be taken lightly. It's something that you really got to know what you're doing. But uh, that one worked out perfectly. I mean, she's she's thriving. She's already buzzing at me, good tongue action. She struck at me twice, putting her away. So she's gonna do good. But anyways, if you're new to the channel, hit that V logo thing and subscribe now, and come on and check us out at the Serpent Center coming soon. This is Willie from Dunham Central. We're checking out later.